Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this blessed evening. We ask you to speak to us. Open our eyes to see, our hearts to receive your word and our spiritual ears to hear clearly. And that we may receive understanding in the mighty name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So, I want to talk about um, something perhaps I've already spoken about, but you see, when we talk about uh, the grace of God, the grace of God, I realized uh, there is more to know about the grace of God. Amen. Right. And indeed, the grace of God is not <clears throat> lawlessness, meaning that there is no law. <clears throat> that that uh, when we have been saved from uh, our old sinful nature into the new covenant, that when the Lord took us from the old covenant to the new covenant, it does not mean that we are lawless, that we are now without the law. Amen. Amen. You know there are certain scriptures in the, in the Bible, for instance, that make your head stretch. Especially when you look at the book of Matthew chapter 5, verse 17. Can we look at Matthew 5? Matthew 5. Mm. Matthew 5, 17. You can say it's one of those scriptures that I myself has <laughs> read it and I'm wondering what does Jesus mean here? But indeed, the more you study the scriptures, the more you begin to understand what he really means. No? And he means what it says, what he says. And he says what he means. Because the Bible says, the word of God is tested seven times. Every word that proceeds from his mouth is perfect. It's tried. When it goes out, it needs no further modification. It means it, and it's settled. Amen. So, maybe by so again, so I need to understand the true meaning of grace. Would you like to read the 17 to 20? Yeah. Uh, Matthew 5, 17. Mm -hmm. Think not that I am come to destroy the law mm -hmm. or the prophets. Mm -hmm. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. Mm -hmm. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, mm -hmm. one jot or one tittle mm -hmm. shall no wise pass from the law, mm -hmm. till all be fulfilled. Amen. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments mm -hmm. and shall teach men so, mm -hmm. he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But mm -hmm. whosoever shall do them, shall do and teach them, mm -hmm. the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. 20. Mm -hmm. For I say unto you, that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees, mm -hmm. ye shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. Amen. 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 Okay, let's go to Romans chapter 7. Now, these are very powerful scriptures. Mm. I want to read a number of them and then we go deep. Okay, I want to read Romans chapter 7. Mm. Verse um, 12. Mm -hmm. In Romans chapter 8, mm -hmm. verse 1 to verse um, 4. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Romans <coughs> mm -hmm. chapter 7, verse 12. Mm -hmm. Therefore, the law is holy and the commandment holy and just and good. Mm -hmm. Romans 8, 1 to 4. Mm -hmm. There is therefore now no condemnation to those, to them mm -hmm. which are in Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. who walk not after the flesh, mm -hmm. but after the spirit. Mm -hmm. For the law of the spirit mm -hmm. of life mm -hmm. in Jesus Christ has made me free from the law of sin and death. Mm -hmm. For what the law could not do, mm -hmm. 
in that it was weak through the flesh, mm -hmm. God sending his own son in, li in the likeness of sinful mm -hmm. flesh, mm -hmm. and for sin, mm -hmm. condemn sin in the flesh. Mm -hmm. Verse 4, mm -hmm. that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us, mm -hmm. who walk not after the flesh, mm -hmm. but after the spirit. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Now, two more scriptures. When the book of uh, uh, two more scriptures, one in the book of um, Joshua. Would you like to read Joshua? Uh -huh. And then I'll give you Hebrew, Hebrews. Uh -huh. Right. Don't get lost. All these scriptures they are every one thread, yeah? Mm -hmm. That I want us to see. Joshua 24. Mm -hmm. Joshua is a um, it's an old man now. And um, all right, from verse fourteen. Okay, wait. First, read from verse. Uh, are you with me? Mm -hmm. From verse two to verse uh, four. Right. Mm -hmm. And then you go to verse uh, 14 to verse 15. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Right? Mm -hmm. <coughs> Joshua 24, mm -hmm. verse 2. Mm -hmm. And Joshua said to the people, yes. This says the Lord God of Israel, mm -hmm. your fathers, including Terah, the father of Abraham, mm -hmm. And the father of Nahor dwelt <coughs> on the other side of the river mm. in old times, and they served other gods. Then I looked, mm -hmm. then I took your father Abraham mm -hmm. from the other side of the river, led him throughout all the land of Canaan, mm -hmm. and multiplied his descendants, and gave him Isaac. Mm. To Isaac I gave Jacob and Esau. Mm. To Esau I gave the mountains of Seir to possess, but Jacob and his children went down to Egypt. Mm -hmm. Then, um, Joshua 24, verse 14 and 15. Mm -hmm. Now therefore, <clears throat> fear the Lord, mm -hmm. serve him in sincerity and in truth, and mm -hmm. put away the gods which your fathers served on the other side of the river and in Egypt. Mm -hmm. Serve the Lord. Mm -hmm. And if it seems evil to you to serve the Lord, mm -hmm. choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve, mm -hmm. whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the river, mm -hmm. or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. Mm -hmm. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Ah. Now, Roman, uh, Hebrews chapter 8. Mm -hmm. yeah. From verse 3. To verse uh, five, mm -hmm. and then uh, no, let's say for verse three to the end, All right? Okay. Mm -hmm. Hebrews chapter eight, verse three. Mm -hmm. For every high priest is ordained mm -hmm. to offer gifts and sacrifices. Mm -hmm. Wherefore it is of necessity that this man have somewhat also to offer. Mm. For if he were on earth, mm. he should not be a priest, mm. seeing that there are priests that offer gifts according to the law, mm. who serve unto the example and shadow of heavenly things, mm. as Moses was admonished of God when he was about to make the tabernacle. Mm. For see, said he, that thou make all things according to the pattern showed to thee in the mount. Mm. Verse 6. 
but now hath he obtained a more excellent ministry mm -hmm. by how how much also he is the mediator of better of a better covenant which was established upon better promises mm -hmm. for if the first covenant had been faultless then should no place have been sought mm -hmm. for the second mm -hmm. for finding fault with them he said mm -hmm. behold the days come mm -hmm. says the lord when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel mm -hmm. and with the house of Judah, mm -hmm. not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand mm -hmm. and to lead them out of the land of Egypt, mm -hmm. because they continued not in my covenant, mm -hmm. and I regarded them not, say the Lord. Mm -hmm. Verse 10, For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. Mm -hmm. After those days, say the Lord, mm -hmm. I will put my loss into their mind, and I will write them in their hearts mm. and I will be to them a God and they shall be to me a people mm. and they shall not and they shall not teach they shall teach not and they shall not teach every man his neighbor mm. and every man his brother saying mm. know the Lord mm -hmm. for all shall know me from the least to the greatest mm. for I will be merciful to the to their unrighteousness mm -hmm. And their sins and their iniquities mm -hmm. will I remember no more. Mm -hmm. Verse 13. Mm -hmm. In that he said, the new covenant he had made the first old. Mm -hmm. Now that which decayeth mm -hmm. and waxeth old is ready to vanish away. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Now really this is a, ro a long message. <laughs> no? So we don't we don't have much time. In fact time is out. <laughs> But I'd like to say this. <clears throat> when you go to the book of Joshua, mm -hmm. the Lord brings his people now beyond the Jordan and into the promised land. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. And then he caused them to inherit their promise land. Through Joshua, the son of Nun, not the son of Nun. His servant. And uh, we learn here now through this conversation that Joshua was charging them to remain steadfast to the Lord. Amen? But we understand very well that before they got to this place, before they got to this place where they have the covenant of God in their midst, Amen, with them, the oracles of heaven, Amen. Amen. Before they got to this place, they, they were at another place. They were at a different place. Amen. And so if you rewind back, you find that their ancestor Abraham and his father's house and his father's father's house, they worshipped idols. Amen? Beyond the Euphrates. Hallelujah. I think some scriptures say Mesopotamia, but maybe not. But in Mesopotamia, there, beyond the river, Euphrates, they worshipped idols. And you know too well that when you worship an idol, an idol has certain requirements upon its <coughs> worshippers. Of course, we know it's idol. Uh, the idols are demons. No? So these demons... And which are personified by these idols have requirements of worship hallelujah Amen. these requirements span they span all areas of life they span all areas of life the instruction that goes forth from these idols whatever the, the, the laws of these idols or however they are passed down these requirements of worship dictate every manner of their life. 
the idols wash idol the idol gods tells them what kind of makeup to use Amen. how to cut their hair when to cut their hair in India yeah so you make a vow so you go back to your idol and you say now I give you my hair that is the that that, that, that is the regulation of worship that if you make a, a vow then to 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 be thankful you go and cut off your hair so so they give you certain regulations to obey how to cook when to cook amen like when we were growing up and our forefathers they worshiped idols their idols told them don't sweep at night for instance yeah or before you eat you must take uh, 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 one you know uh, piece of yeah. pop and throw it to the north another one you throw it to the west another one you throw it to the east another one you throw it to the south and you say thank you ancestors that is the regulation amen that you are paying them homage like that or some of them when someone dies maybe someone very important dies and then he dies to uh, the, a servant dies with him you know the beautiful girl is killed or whatever or a goat is killed and is buried with that, with that man, that woman. So there are certain regulations. In fact, they had so many idols that when you want a child, you worship one idol for fertility. The idol of fertility has certain requirements to get a child. Bath in this way, have sex this way, whatever. If they wanted harvest, they worship the idol of the harvest, the rain, whatever, the god of the rain. The god of rain tells them now how to behave themselves in order to receive rain, where to put their idol. So, so they lived, meaning their lives were dictated by idols. Everything they do, they did, and they still do today with those who worship idol gods. Their lives are instructed by idols. Hallelujah. So, their work, their family, their relationships, everything is surrounded by idol worship. So he says, beyond the Jordan, not the Jordan, beyond the Euphrates, they worshipped idols. And those idols taught them how to live. In other words, the idols teach you how to live. So Joshua is saying, your fathers beyond the, the, the Euphrates River, they were taught how to live a certain way by the idols they worshipped. And then the Lord says, but I took your father out of there. I took him out now. And then, I took your father Jacob into Egypt. When they went to Egypt, they found another form of idol worship. And the Egyptians worshipped many gods. And these gods too had requirements upon the Egyptians. To such an extent that, uh, because the, the Hebrews, as they lived among the, 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 the Egyptians, they too assimilated into the customs and worship practices of the Egyptians. That's why he says now, even in Egypt, the forefathers worshipped idols in Egypt. Yeah? Mm -hmm. And the Egyptian gods taught them how to live in Egypt. Yeah? Yes. And so they lived. And then the Lord rescued them from the hands of the Egyptians and brought them into the land of Canaan, the land of the Jebusites, Canaanites in Canaan, yeah? the Amorites, the Moabites, the Perizzites, the Hittites, the Hevites, the Rephites, eh? who else was there? The, the Philistines. And these nations too worshipped, the Edomites too, they worshipped idols. And these nations worshipped Baal, Beelzebub, whoever, um, I guess they worship Beelzebub too. They worship Dagon. Many, many, many idols. 
And these idols too had a certain requirement, had requirements of worship. So Joshua is now saying, listen to me. Your fathers in Mesopotamia worshipped idols. And they lived even as the idols in Mesopotamia required of them. Your forefathers in Egypt worshipped idols. And there in Egypt, they lived even as according to how the idol gods of Egypt required them to live. Amen? And behold, here in Canaan too, there are idols, idol gods, that the Canaanites worshipped, and these ones too have requirements for worship. So, he presents them now with this very important decision. He said, now you have to make a choice. Now you have to make a choice. In fact, when the Lord took them out of Egypt, he brought them out of Egypt into the wilderness of repentance. And there in isolation, he came down in his majestic glory and he gave them, he handed to them his requirements of worship. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. He gave them the requirements of worship. That if you are going to live as my people, then this is how you must live. Must. So it's not a pick and choose. Like, I can take half of what the Lord says and take half of what the God says and try to mix them. Too. In fact, when the Philistines tried, they found the Gormos in the ground like this. <laughs> you cannot worship too. Amen. See, so you have to make a choice. Will you worship the idol gods that your fathers worshipped in Mesopotamia? Or the idol gods that your fathers worshipped in Egypt? Or the idol gods that are in Canaan? So you cannot worship both. Or will you worship the Lord your God, the one who rescued you from Egypt with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm? Amen. Amen. That's the question. That's the choice. That's, that's what he brought before them. But we must remember that when the Lord God Almighty called Moses up the mountain, and handed him the covenant by which they were to live. The Lord, for 40 days and 40 nights, took Moses. But take notice, he did not take him to Moab. For those 40 days and 40 nights, the Lord did not take Moses to Egypt. Amen. Amen. The Lord did not take Moses to the Euphrates or to the Amorites or to the Hevites. This is very important. The Lord, for 40 days and 40 nights, when he was in conversation with Moses, giving him the requirements of worship, he did not take him to Namibia to show him and say, look how Namibia is or how the USA is and it says now as it is in the US replicate no he did not say now look at Egypt as it is in Egypt replicate no and I think this is where the problem is in the church today because we have not understood that the Lord did not take Moses to an earthly kingdom to show him the majesty of those kingdoms and then commanding him to replicate as he saw. No. 
In fact, if you look, the one you read in Hebrews, but let's read it in uh, Exodus 25, verse 40. This will change your life. Hallelujah. The Lord did not take Moses to Russia and say, look, this is the Kremlin. So I want you to build for me a tabernacle as the Kremlin looks like. No. Amen. Amen. Uh, because what we do here, like when, when Peter the Great built, uh, built St. Petersburg, Petersburg, the city, mm -hmm. he went to Europe. Mm -hmm. And then he began to scout, scout, scouting, 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 and then copying, 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 and then inviting the architects, and then inviting the, the, the engineers. Mm -hmm. And then as he saw them, then he came and replicated here. He went to Netherlands, he went wherever, whatever country, maybe France, Finland, wherever, I don't know exactly which other countries he went to. You see that? He went, he went, he went. And then he took the, what he wanted, then he came, then he invited the architect and he says, build as it is in Europe. That's not what the Lord did. He did not take Moses to another earthly kingdom. Amen? And say, now I want you to replicate Netherlands in the in, in, the, in, in your camp. No. Leviticus, eh? Yeah, Twenty. Exodus, Exodus. Ah, Exodus. Sorry, yes, yes. Sorry, <laughs> I'm in Leviticus. <laughs> so I'm saying Leviticus. Exodus 25, verse 40. Can you read it? And look that thou make them after their pattern, which uh -huh. was showed thee in the month. Aha. Uh -huh. It says. See that you make them according to the pattern shown you on the mountain. You see that? Now what pattern was that? I'm afraid really, I don't want to take too much time. <laughs> but maybe five minutes. Okay. But what pattern was it? If he didn't take him to more. And we know that. The Lord, yeah, it was during the days of Moses, yeah, mm -hmm. when the Moabite women came and seduced them. Mm -hmm. And they began to worship the idol gods of the Moabites. Mm -hmm. yeah, that he judged them severely. Mm -hmm. no? There's no, no, not here. Not Moab, Moab. Mm -hmm. no? mm -hmm. That when the Moabites tried to infiltrate and lead the children of Israel away towards the Moabite way of living, he chastised them. So surely he did not take him to Moab. Because he says, those were his enemies. But he says, according to the pattern. But what pattern was that? That is heaven. Amen. Amen. We understand very well that Moses was taken to heaven. For 40 days and 40 nights. And the Lord opened heaven and showed his servant. And he took him, took him through heaven and showed him the secrets of heaven. Showed him the secrets of heaven. Showed him the golden altar with its horns and its coals showed him the holy priestly garment showed him showed him the glorious garments of the messiah eh? the high priestly garment showed him the candlestick of heaven the one with seven lamps that and the flames showed him the Ark of Covenant of God in heaven and the mercy seat, the shoe bread of heaven, the utensils in heaven. Huh. This guy saw, he saw the cherubim of glory, the majestic angels. He saw the house of the Lord. 
and was given a thorough, thorough, a thorough tour of the house of God. And after he finished, he says, make sure that you don't do, that you don't replicate any other thing except what I showed you on the mountain. In other words, he really wanted Moses to replicate heaven on earth. Amen. Amen. So, what you see Moses replicating from henceforth is essentially the heavenly things. What he was allowed to replicate. Huh, this is powerful. Because for a very long time, people have been wanting to know how does heaven look like? Yeah? And how do we live to please he that brought us on this earth? How do we please him? How do we live according to his ways? How, how do we live in such a way that it is pleasing to him? And then here now, you see the Lord opening up his heart and giving to Moses the heavenly instructions. Huh. Really out of the abundance of his love. Allowing now Israel to have access to the heavenly worship. And then he says, now replicate this heavenly worship down here. Oh, that was powerful. It's no small thing. This one, it's no small thing. Because the Moabites, they worship Baal. They do not know that this is not how, this is not the God of heaven. <laughs> They thought that was the God of heaven. And when they lived according to his law, they thought, this is the ultimate. <laughs> this is it now. We have now the ultimate law that commands how we live. But he says, no. They missed it. Yeah? The Egyptians. They missed it. In Mesopotamia. They missed it. But now here in the wilderness, he opens heaven. Then he lets his glory come down. And then he, 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 he allowed them to replicate the heavenly court. Ah! That's powerful. That's really powerful. That the Lord will allow you to see. In fact, after he sent Moses back, he says, look, there are even some people down there. I have put my spirit in them. They know what to do. They know how to put all the garments, how to make the garments as it is in heaven. Ah, we are not going to finish. <laughs> we are not going to finish. Amen. But you see, this is no small thing. And so when we read the Old Testament, you see the Bible says, it is a shadow of things to come. But boy, is there so much revealed in those in that shadow. Hallelujah. In fact, it's as if you have to go back to the Old Testament to really understand what is this grace that we have. Otherwise, you abuse it. If you don't understand the, the weight, the, pre, the treasure, the glory that is revealed, you will abuse the grace. Total. Oh, very total. Total. Yeah? Very much. It's, it's like someone, uh, uh, even as it happens here, yeah? here it's like uh, people, they fight. Yeah? They, to liberate a nation. Fight so much with courage, enthusiasm, and passion to liberate the nation just for their descendants to bring the nation back to the same bondage it was before. So now what was the use of so much fighting? Yeah? So if we don't understand the glory that was revealed and what this we will not understand this grace we have. Amen. Amen. We will not understand this grace. We will abuse it. And treat it, as Hebrew says, as a common thing. As a grace. Yeah, grace. Grace is my friend. We go to the we go to party together. <laughs> we go to the club with grace. Oh. 
Amen. Amen. Father, we thank you for... You are holy. And we pray, Lord, that you help us to see the beauty, the glory, the power, the revelation in your holy word. Amen. And help us, O oh Lord, to tremble indeed. To tremble. And we ask you, Lord, to open our eyes to see, to treasure, to love you more than anything, to treasure this grace, to treasure this blessed grace that we have, this glorious salvation of the cross. Thank you for the salvation of the cross. Thank you for the huge, humongous, glorious price you paid on Calvary. And we thank you, Lord, for this gift of righteousness. Help us, O Lord, to prepare for the coming of the Messiah. And we may always be found ready at all times. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you.